Hello. I'm out here. I figured I'd work on the in dividing head stuff a little bit. My lathe's kind of being finicky at the moment, so we'll see what we can do. I'll probably end up just machining the stuff on the shaper. I already cleaned this one up here, just on the shaper. So that way I had a nice square surface to go off of. I did a little bit of machining on the stuff, just on the lathe. And face this to, to length, or these to length, and I didn't face this part here yet. Still got to do that. I don't have a faceplate for my lathe, so it was getting kind of sketchy there for a while. So, I just took the measurement of the holes where I needed them and just drilled them in this. And chucked that up in the lathe. Indicate that all in, and you're good to go. Um, got all the flashing cleaned off of a lot of the castings, and this thing is solid. This has some serious heft to it. So. Let's get started. Okay, I'm just setting this one up here. It'll be... I gotta face the inside of this out. I needed some spacers, so I took just some sprues here and just drilled into them and tapped them 5 sixteenths and then turned them so they're both exactly parallel to each other. So they're exactly two inches off the bay, this thing. And I have it set up so when I put it on there, it'll be setting just like this. Then I can face it however I need it. Okay, I got this machined up. I had to take a bit off because I can my since it was such an off balance load, it made the compound slide gibbs, they went loose on me and started digging in, so I had to face it pretty deep to get rid of that, so. Hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. If it does, I'll just recast the part, but for the most part it looks like it shouldn't cause too much of an issue. That doesn't even go on there. I think it goes on this side. So 
we'll get this together and if it does cause an issue I'll take and put a spacer in here that way the gear can ride on the spacer rather than riding on aluminum and then it won't wear the aluminum so let's get this thing put together I did not have any extra screws the quarter inch ones so I took some flathead ones and just trimmed them down to fit I think it looks better so yeah the hole shifted on me when I was trying to drill them so that's why it's all over the place and why they're oblong because I filed them to get them back to right side right place I'll get this put together and we'll come back and I'll stick this on the shaper and clean off the top and we'll flip it put it on and face off the bottom Facing off the top, I know this one's a bit taller than this one, so it's screwing me up a bit, so I'll just clean it all off so it's all parallel across and we'll yep. the bolt holes and everything on both sides line up exactly with the T-slots on the shaper. Down. I'm just going to let the thing go for a finishing pass right across and we'll be good to go. Get it down. Good. Go 15 thousandths. back after it's done. Okay, it's all cleaned up. I uh, took a file, just broke all the edges. I had one little blow holes right here for porosity, just tiny little things. Four little holes, which isn't really going to hurt anything. Well, four and a half things as smooth as glass so we'll get the angle plate out indicate everything in or clamp everything up and we'll start cutting the bottom get it nice and parallel to the top and square to the side since we have the face here which was faced off because it's going to be, it'll it can be used for putting the whole thing on its side so you can use this whole thing as a indexing table also so if you got the reference surface use it okay I had some difficulty trying to machine this thing with the angle plate because I couldn't get the cutter over enough to actually machine it the, I tried setting up every which way and the only way I could get it was this way. I could have easily done this up in the lathe because it's attached here, but I want the finish of the shaper. And I uh, you know that when it comes off here it'll be really flat. So... Yep. 
I'm on the finishing pass right now because I just roughing it out. So I'll let this go and come back when it's done. Okay, I got it cleaned up and the only thing left to do is bore the center hub out for bushings, which I don't have any bushings right now. So I'll have to wait on those. I was working on a worm gear for this thing because I'll be making my own worm and worm gear. That's what the brass gear blank is for. I'll show you what it looks like. Here it is. It got chewed up a bit because my lathe was having trouble, so. It's four threads per inch, one inch diameter, which is just the dimensions that I got off of a catalog that had the gears stuff on it. So, yeah. Should work for that. It, here's the gear blank itself. It's solid brass. I'll chuck it up using this to bore the, or to do up both sections here. And then I'll bore it and everything so that it's perfectly concentric all the way through. And then I'll chop that off and face the back side. Okay, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning. I've been at this all night, so I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Thanks for watching. See ya. Okay, I figured I'd show you this. I got this the other day. It does work real well. I'm going to hook it up to my airline that goes around the shop here for whatever and have that for running pressure on stuff. I picked that up and all these. There's four flute, two flute, there's a bunch of ball end mills and I can't remember what that is but it's like 11.30 let's see what it is it is 11 sixteenths by 16 no idea what I'd need that thread size for but they do come in handy and I got the forge out the other day and was making more tooling, hardened it all. I just got to hone them. I did that one and a dovetail. So, not the prettiest things in the world, but Shaper sure loves them, so I'll keep using them.